So I thought I'd do a three videos called or titled Homebound Physics. Stuck in the house, stuck at home, isolated, trying to think of things to do. And physics is something I enjoy, so I thought I'd share. Today I'm going to talk about finding the efficiency of a kettle for boiling water. So percent efficiency is talking about the energy that's transferred between or for, transformed from one form to another. In a, a kettle, we go from electricity to heat. So heat is the energy that we want. Electricity is the energy that we start with. So when we want to know efficiency, the percentage efficiency of, an, uh, of something is equal to the energy you get out, in this case, the heat energy, divided by the energy you put in, in this case, the electrical energy, <clears throat> and then you multiply it by 100 to make it into a percent value. Now, for that, we need to know a few other things. First thing is to find the energy coming in. We know that the kettle has a, uh, a power that it presents. So when you uh, look, I'll show you in the, uh, later on in the video, but when you look at the base of a kettle, it'll tell you the in output energy. The, uh, how much energy, sorry, how much energy it draws from the circuit. So we need power, and that's given in watts. So I'll write the units underneath. And that's equal to the energy that it produces divided by the time it takes to produce that energy. So a watt is actually equal to a joule per second. So one joule of energy divided by the amount of time that it takes to produce that energy. So there's your input energy. Now the output energy, in this case, is going to be heat. <clears throat> the heat energy, we're talking about the heat energy required to change the temperature of the water. And in this case, we're going to bring water to a boil. So I'm going to make an assumption about the water coming out of my tap that it's about 5 degrees Celsius. And actually, let's call it 10 degrees. It's probably closer to 10 degrees Celsius. And I could measure this, but I can't be bothered. Um, and we're going to change it to 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling temperature of water. So we're changing a certain amount of water. So we're going to call that the mass of the water. We're going to multiply that by the change in temperature. That delta there means change. And in the middle, we're going to put something called the heat capacity. <clears throat> the heat capacity is the amount of energy it takes to raise one kilogram of the substance by one degree Celsius. So the units here are going to be mass, which is kilograms, temperature, which is degrees Celsius, and energy, joules, per kilogram degrees Celsius. And that is going to equal to our change in energy, that's heat, and that turns into, well, kilograms divided by kilograms, degrees Celsius divided by degrees Celsius leaves only joules. Okay, so this is where we're starting. I'm going to get the input energy from the, uh, the kettle. I'm going to figure out the time it takes to give it the energy that it needs. And we'll do the calculations from there. So let's go have a look. Okay, so... I'm checking out the kettle base and I don't know how well the phone will focus on it but oh, upside down if you read this very carefully you can see down here that the output or input is 1500 watts and over to this side I've measured out one and a half liters of water I'm gonna pour that into the kettle as little as possible. Now you get to witness my amazing professional filming technique where I film a window while doing something somewhere else. Alright, there we go. Starting the kettle. Just to show where the measurement is. You can see it just sitting just above the 1.5, so apparently it's not as accurate as the uh, Pyrex dish. Six minutes and 58 seconds. 
and any excess water that I don't use for something else, I pour into the sink. You don't waste back of the heat with hot water. And of course, always unplug your appliances when you're finished using them. Okay, so we've gathered our information. Now let's do the calculations. So if we want to start with percent efficiency, let's, here, here's the information we have. I used 1.5 kilograms or 1.5 liters of water. That's the same thing. The heat capacity of water is 4,180 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. And I also identified that the kettle draws 1,500 watts from the circuit. So percent efficiency is equal to the output energy divided by the input energy times 100. So let's put our calculations in here. So on the top, we're going to put our change in energy. So that's this value here, MC delta T. And on the bottom, we're going to put our output energy. And in this case, that is 1500 watts. So our power times our time. Let's plug in the numbers. So 1.5, and I'll put the units in so you can see how I deal with units as well. 1.5 kilograms times 4,180 joules per kilogram degree Celsius times delta T, which is 90 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna divide that by the power, which is 1,500 and we'll call it joules per second, just so you can see how the, the units cancel out. And the time was six minutes and 58 seconds, which is 418 seconds. So let's take a quick look at the units here. <clears throat> degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius are gonna cancel there. Kilograms and kilograms will cancel and we're left with joules on the top. Seconds divided by seconds, that's going to cancel, and we're left with joules on the bottom. So it's going to be a unitless number, and then we multiply by 100 to get our percent. So I had an opportunity there from that last video with these numbers to show something fun about when you lay numbers out and lay uh, values out and look for cancellation opportunities. So first, let's take care of the units in this one. So we've got kilograms divided by kilograms, so they're gone. We've got degrees Celsius divided by degrees Celsius, they're gone. Seconds divided by seconds, they're gone. <clears throat> and joules divided by joules, so we have no units in this calculation. So the next line is going to look like this. 1.5 times 4180 times 90 divided by 1500 times 418. Now if you look at this number, or this set of numbers, <clears throat> something really cool happens. First, Let's get rid of some uh, obvious ones. 4180 is 10 times 4180. So we can take those guys out and leave ourselves with a 10 here. Now we've got a 10 times nine here, so we can take that and get rid of that one. We've got a 10 here, so we can get rid of that one. So now we only have a nine, a 1.5, and a 15 on the bottom. 1.5 divided by 15, Oh yeah, sorry, we should have the 100 times 100 on the outside. And we're left with 1.5 divided by 15 is the same as 1 over 10. So we actually have 9 over 10, which is equal to 0 0.9 times 100, which gives us 90%. Now you don't have to do the cancellations in that order, but it works out awfully nice. The cost of electricity is equal to the price, and let's put this into units. The price is actually given in, actually let's put it in cents, because it's given in cents per kilowatt hour times, well, kilowatts is power, hours is time, so we're going to multiply, to, to, to leave ourselves with only cents, we have to multiply by power and time. So we're going to write this up here as power times time. Okay, so times 
Uh, how can we put this? Well, we can put it in hours, uh, kilowatts and hours, to show that the units will cancel. But the units aren't going to cancel on the first way we do this. In fact, I'm going to turn this sideways so I can show the units a little more clearly. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, cost is equal to the price times power times time. So what do we have in here? Uh, I checked for the values and let's let's assume we're doing this at peak peak times. So peak count, uh, price is 20 cents, 20.8 cents per kilowatt hour. Now a kilowatt hour means you're burning one kilowatt for one hour. So for every kilowatt you use and every hour you use it, you, you're, you're paying 21 cents. Now the power we're drawing from the circuit, 1500 watts. And the time we did it for was 418 seconds. Now you'll notice we have kilowatts on the bottom, watts on the top, hours on the bottom, seconds on the top. We've got to change that. If we're going to cancel this properly, we have to get rid of those differences in units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by one a bunch of times. This is the uh, unit cancellation method for uh, the yeah unit cancellation method for converting units. So I've got seconds on the top and hours on the bottom. So I want to make a fraction that's got hours on the top and seconds on the bottom. Well, how many seconds are there an hour? 3,600. That is equal to one. One hour divided by 3,600 seconds. Then I want to get rid of the watts on the top and kilowatts on the bottom. So I need kilowatts on the top and watts on the bottom. And there's a thousand watts in one kilowatt. So if I put this calculation together, then the answer should come out to what I want. So let's take a quick look at things we can cancel, just, just for your interest. If I've got a thousand on the bottom, I've got a zero there that I can get rid of this zero with, a zero there I can get rid of this zero with. So I've got 15 over 10. I could even turn that into 1.5 by dividing by 10. <coughs> No other easy calculations or reductions there. So we'll just jump from there, throw it into the calculator. <coughs> and surprisingly enough, this comes out to 3.6 cents. So it costs 3.6 cents to boil 1.5 liters of water at peak hydro hours.